Now it's time to test this out and ensure that this works. So first, let's do a continuous ping to the IP address that will eventually be the default gateway. So the pre-guest access and post-guest access is all part of the same guest network of VLAN 40 for that network. So we just want to run a continuous ping because we know that ping will be allowed as part of that policy. So we want to just ping 10.140.1. Now let's go back to our access switch and let's go ahead and plug in our laptop to port number three and see what happens, which will be the pre guest component. Okay. That has been plugged in. So let's do show authentication sessions for port number three. Okay. And so far so good. So we see that this is the IP assigned to that laptop and that it is authorized so far. And based on the server policies, VLAN 40 has been pushed down and applied to that switch port, which we can always validate. But this right here reflects the redirect URL that we push down to our client once they go to some simple web or to some secure web page based on that redirect ACL that we added earlier directly onto the switch. And this right here shows the downloadable ACL for web authentication for what will be permitted or denied initially on that port. So that's why we're not able to ping anything yet because ICMP is not allowed in that downloadable ACL. Okay, so, so far so good. So now let's open up a web browser and let's try to access HTTP and the IP address of the Active Directory server and see what happens. Great, we are redirected, that is the redirect URL that we saw on the access switch. So perfect, it matches that. So let's go ahead and make a security exception to this. Now, of course, in production environments, you would use an actual domain name and have server certificates. And then here we'll log on with one of those guest accounts that we created earlier. And let's say continue and success. So let's see what happens. Let's minimize this and we are able to ping that IP address. But let's see what we see on the access switch now. Okay, so let's run that same command and perfect. So again, we still have the same IP address. This now reflects our guest username account that we use to log in. We're still assigned to VLAN 40 because that's part of that authorization profile for guest users and it applied this downloadable ACL to that switch port of gigabit zero three. Fantastic. So to do show access list and that right here shows, where is that at? Right here, that ICMP is allowed. That's why we're able to ping that IP on that switch. And of course we should be able now to access the AD server for port 80, which is what we specify as part of the policies. These other services should not work. So let's go ahead and confirm that. Let's go back to our web browser, open up a new tab and do HTTP followed by the IP address. And that works perfect. We can also go ahead and confirm if we were unable to access the other pages, which is very important. So one of them is using 443 as the secure port and we are not able to access that. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for on port 80, 80, oops, for web HTML. And that will also continue to spin and not work because that is being filtered in the environment. And before we wrap up this video, let's log on back to that sponsor portal page. Let's say sponsor one. Great, and once we're logged on, let's go to manage accounts. And there is one of those accounts that is active. If I click there, it will provide details of that account. Really not much, but it will show the duration of when this account is active and that it is active and how much time is left. So of course, as a sponsor, I have options of either doing a reset, I can suspend, I can extend or resend this information. So those are some of the things that we can do here.
And that is it. So that is how you can set up guest services or identity control based on web authentication.